Welcome to the prayer tonight. This evening, uh, there is an invitation to pray for one person in need, a real person in the real world. And to do this with Jesus, in Jesus, through the person of Jesus. We're going to be accompanying uh, Jesus to somebody's home as he, he pays a, a house visit. And we're going to begin the, the prayer this evening by, by hearing a little bit of background, giving you some context. So I want to introduce to you Lynn, who works for Jesuit Missions, but she will also introduce herself. So thank you, Lynn. Steve, good evening, and everyone, good evening. Uh, thank you very much to the spirituality team for working in conjunction with Jesuit Missions on our Lenten campaign and for giving us this opportunity to share our work, but particularly uh, to share the stories of some of the people in Darjeeling who are impacted by human trafficking. Jesuit Missions is the International Mission and Development Office for the Jesuits in Britain. We currently support 30 projects in 20 countries across Africa and Asia. Our partners work in areas such as environmental sustainability, education, and livelihoods. This year, our Lenten campaign, Beyond the Headlines, seeks to raise awareness of human trafficking in the tea gardens of Darjeeling in India and the challenges faced by the Jesuit social center there to combat this issue. The state where Darjeeling is situated, West Bengal, consistently reports the highest number of trafficking victims nationally due to its location on the border with countries including Bangladesh and Nepal, as well as its capital, Calcutta, which is one of the major gateway cities in Asia. Approximately 1,000 families live on each of the 90 tea gardens in the Jar Darjeeling Hills. These are closing at a rapid rate due to climate change. And this is creating a plethora of social problems and forcing young women and men to migrate to large cities where they become the victims of human trafficking. Since the pandemic, the tea worker community has become even more vulnerable and many young people have left school and college due to the impact of lockdown. Young boys and girls are therefore becoming easy targets for human traffickers who promise them lucrative jobs, but actually trap them in the human trafficking chain as unpaid domestic workers, often subjected to horrific abuse. There will be lots more of this labor exploitation unless these young people receive focused skills training programs, which reduce their vulnerability. Since 2015, Jesuit Missions has been working with a Jesuit social center in Darjeeling, which offers a wide range of services for the victims of human trafficking, including intervention and rescue, medical and counseling services, skills training and livelihood support, providing them and their families with the path to a new life the center also provides protection through a social watch network spanning several states, collaborating with the police to report suspicious behavior and running mass community awareness raising seminars on the tea gardens. Their work also includes the rescue and rehabilitation of trafficked women and girls. It supports more than 50 young women and men each year in context specific job training programs including in nursing and cosmetics, as well as running self-help finance groups, which partner with banks to give women access to loans for their economic empowerment. By creating opportunities to develop their skills for self-employment locally and further afield, the center is able to reduce the vulnerability of Darjeeling's marginalized tea growing community to trafficking and improve their future prospects and lead dignified lives. We very much appreciate and thank you for joining tonight's Imagine. By entering into the experience of those who have been trafficked, you help to create empathy and enter into the world as Christ sees it, 
full of challenges, but also a place of hope. As you learn about Jesuit missions partners in Darjeeling this Lent, please continue to pray for both the victims of trafficking and those who support them. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. We're going to hear something of uh, one person's story. Now, I'm going to share a screen and show an image of this person. She's in the middle of this photo. Her name, for our purposes, is Rena. We've changed her name to keep her safe. She's one of the people the Jesuit Center is helping. To her, to her right, on our left, is Father Pascal, who works for the Center, and Lucy a colleague of Lynn's who works for Jesuit Missions in London, who she visited over a year ago now. I'm going to tell you something of Rena's story. It's not an easy story to listen to, so keep yourself safe as you hear. When Rena was 12 and had just started secondary school, she became very ill with a disease that caused parasites to eat at her internal organs. And of course, she was unable to carry on with her schooling. In January 2018, after several years of being unable to attend school. Trafficking agents came to her village and they took her away, about a hundred kilometers away for domestic work. She was treated badly. And after a year there, she decided she needed to escape and try and return home. But the owner of the house obviously wasn't happy with this. And his reaction was to throw her from a second story floor window. She broke her leg and badly injured her spinal cord. A neighbor saw this happening, and took her to the local hospital and also opened a complaint at the police station. However, the owner of the house who had done this was a wealthy man and the case was dismissed. After a few weeks in hospital, her family members were contacted by that Jesuit social center. And contacted the Jesuit social center they heard about the case and they intervened to bring her home. She's been looked after ever since uh, that time. And she is now back living at home with her father and her sister. She's visited regularly. She's even decided to open a clothes and cosmetics business. Her life might begin again in the area of her tea garden and also the local markets. And the Jesuit Centre has provided her with seed funding to start her small business. And it pays also for her continuing medical treatment. So her life really can begin again. You'll see uh, to the right of the image uh, a woman's picture on the corrugated wall. Uh, that's Rena's mother who died a couple of years ago of COVID. As you hear something of Rena's story, 
just notice how you are feeling about it. And what do you want for this young woman? And let God know what that is. Where we're going next is to a passage of scripture. We're going to use this passage to help us to be with Jesus, with Rena. And it's the fifth chapter of Mark's gospel, beginning at verse 21. As you listen to this scripture, you may notice some parallels with Rena's story. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side of the lake, a great crowd gathered round him and he was by that lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? This child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. And he strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat.
let your prayer for Rena, for others who suffer similar fates, be expressed through the look and the touch and the word of Jesus as you accompany him to her house. Marina was also 12 years old when she became ill. It affected her education, her health, of course, her prospects, her future. At that time, something was dying in her. And then she was taken away. And the next few years were oppressive and they were cruel. Her parents, and latterly her father, longed for her restoration. Kindness has taken her by the hand. This little girl is a woman and she has got up and is walking on her own two feet. I invite you to imagine the scene of her simple corrugated house before you. Set amidst other houses like it. To see something of that image come to your mind's eye. And around these corrugated things, verdant tea plants growing in the fields. as well as some beauty. There are signs of drought affecting the crop. And indications of poverty. Notice that there is litter in places polluting the environment. You also notice the, the smell of the crop, of the tea plants. Breathe it in. Are there other smells that you notice?
you hear the sound of children playing. It's a hot place and it's humid. 30 degrees, you feel the air. Rina and her father are in the house. They are awaiting a visit. Outside, making their way to see her, are Lucy, Father Pascal, Jesus, And you. Find yourself in the scene. You might be one of the characters mentioned or a companion to them. Or on this occasion, you might be a fly on the wall watching what takes place. And so watch them as they make their way to Rena's home. What are they doing as they walk? And pay Special attention to Jesus making his way there. Jesus knows the 12 year old girl that she was and he recalls her becoming ill with this disease. And he knows everything that she's been through since. Being taken away, trafficked, forced to work as a domestic slave effectively. Becoming a victim of violence. And watch Jesus as he remembers.
turn your attention on Tarina, who is about to be visited by these guests, including Jesus. And you watch her as she also recalls her story. in this meeting that's about to take place with Lucy and Pascal and Jesus. What do you want for her? And in some way, tell Jesus what you want from him. The moment has come and you watch as Jesus enters her home and is welcomed by this young woman. How does he look at her? Give some time to see what happens between them. You continue to watch as Jesus blesses her family. He goes to the photograph of her mother, 
who was last summer and he touches it. He blesses her home. And a little garden. He blesses her business. And then he turns his attention once again to her. How does he want to bless Rena? Does anything else happen in the scene involving any of the characters, perhaps involving you? And then all present, remember some of the words from the gospel we heard. Noticing this truth, that what Jesus did then, Jesus wants to do today. My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. Some people came from his house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Jesus said to the Father, do not fear, only believe. He took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was.
he took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha come, which means little girl, get up. And the girl got up and began to walk about. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <laughs>